Was it bread and beer? It seems obvious. But what was the evidence? Was it circumstantial? Why are grains so important? Why did women spend hours grinding wheat and other cereals? To make the pottage. Pottage is just about anything put in a container with water over fire. Now it usually refers to a thick soup. It could be kept hot for instant eating for days. When the pottage was made from grains, it became porridge. Sweeteners like honey or fruit made it more palatable. Porridge became a staple food over much of the world. Presumably, the next step towards settled farming was bread, not fancy leavened bread, but flat bread. How did it start? Probably with thick cereal paste, then shaped into a flat loaf and placed on a hot stone until done. Evidence of the flatbread based on charred crumbs was found at a Natufian site in Jordan from 14,000 years ago. Then several Neolithic sites, still centuries before farming. Like porridge, anything can be put in or on the top of flatbread. Cooking would be improved with primitive ovens. Leavened bread would follow, though when and where is unknown. Fortunately, yeast proved to be accommodating. This could have been the breakthrough to farming. Evidence of sourdough bread was discovered from the ancient world, but long after the start of farming. There is no direct evidence that bread caused farming, but it remains an intriguing theory. What about other theories? What if the harvest process got much better and people accumulated lots of grain? It stores for months when kept dry. Porridge then became available most of the year. Moving required lugging that additional poundage of cereals. Sheep and goats were domesticated about this time. The Neolithic nomads may have learned to milk sheep and goats, making porridge more appealing and migrating less desirable. Were these reasons to settle down and figure out how to make cereals more available through farming? The first beer was not like modern version. Beer is the oldest alcoholic drink. The alcohol is caused by the fermentation of starches, usually from cereal grains. Almost all the cereals have been used at some point in time. Now it's mainly with malted barley. It was so important to the ancient world, it appeared in the Law Code of Hammurabi, the Babylonian king. Beer has an old and distinguished archaeological record going back 13,000 years to a Natufian site in the Carmel Mountains near modern Haifa, Israel. Historical records came from Egypt, chiseled into monuments, and cuneiform tablets from summer. Apparently, beer was a basic ration. China and India both had forms of beer made from rice and millet going back thousands of years. We speculated about the discovery of beer in primordial soup. Consider the sloppy Mesopotamian cook who made way too much thing gruel. After a few days in a big pot, accidental fermentation turned the gruel into a sort of beer. The starch from the cereal turned into sugar. At what point this concoction was drunk, rather than left for the goats, is unknown. Perhaps the cook noticed that the goats were enjoying it way too much. Whenever it happened, beer drinking started, and the brewmasters were soon at work to discover the nectar of the gods. According to Egyptian myth, the god Osiris prepared porridge, but left it out in the sun, forgetting about it. Osiris returned to find the gruel they had fermented and was pleased with the taste, so he passed it down to humans. That was probably how it was discovered, but legend insisted that a god did it. Uruk was the biggest of the Sumerian cities with about 50,000 people. According to the Epic of Gilgamesh, this ruler of Uruk stressed the importance of both bread and beer on his travels, not the inventor, just the promoter. 
Brewing in the same pot increased the reliability of results because yeast cultures took up residence. Adding honey, spices, berries, or herbs changed the taste. The brewmasters of summer produced hundreds of varieties. They were the world's first chemists. They recorded their process on cuneiform tablets. Additional evidence was found on the residue of pottery shards. In A History of the World in Six Glasses, journalist Tom Standage advocated for beer in Mesopotamia that turned seasonal grain collectors into farmers. How else could the supply of beer be maintained? Standage stated, tempting though it is to attribute the adoption of agriculture entirely to beer, it seems most likely that the beer drinking was just one of many factors that helped tip the balance towards farming. The good news, beer is safe to drink because the liquid is boiled, plus the yeast and bacteria producing the alcohol kills some of the bad bugs. It was nutritious because the yeast improved the protein and vitamin content. Before money, food was used for bartering, including the equivalent of wages. Cuneiform tablets from summer showed standard rations of bread, beer, dates, and onions, plus occasional meats and vegetables. In Egypt, the workers were paid in beer and bread on a standard pay scale. Supervisors and higher-ups were paid with more beer and bread. They would consume some and trade the rest using the barter system. Bread and beer were central to the start of civilization. There's lots of evidence, but yes, it's circumstantial. Speaking of bread and beer, why was the Fertile Crescent civilization central? Farming started here first, but why? How did that kick off city-states and civilization? That's the next story that you'll find on Food, History, and Mystery.